Welcome to Deep Dive. I'm Kevin Benedict, your program host. I wanna thank everyone out there for joining us today. Today, I'm so excited to be able to introduce John Licata. Hey Kevin, great to be here. Great to have you. We're here on the 51st floor uh, of this big building in Hudson Park, Hudson Yard. Hudson Yards. Hudson Yard, New York City, overlooking the, that's the Hudson River, right? That is, yes. All right, so <laughs> I just wanna make sure, you know, I keep thinking I'm solely, you know, landing the plane out there in the river when I'm up here. Oh, wow, let's, no, let's not do that today. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that today, but that's what I always comes to mind, and I appreciate the skills he's always shown there, too. But today, we get to talk about something fun. We're gonna talk about you, Okay. Your strategies, your background, all that kind of stuff. So John Licata, he's the Vice President of Marketing Strategy and Communication for SAP Ariba. Marketing Strategies. Yes. Now, I've talked to other people at SAP Ariba, your colleagues mm -hmm. in different roles, and they have some really specific like portfolio marketing, customer marketing, corporate marketing, but you've got marketing strategies. Yes. <laughs> Tell us A about lot. it. Yeah. What does that mean? So really, m what I do and my team really helps the other teams. We yeah. help um, the, the customer marketing. We help the portfolio marketing, executive communications, uh, forward PR. Um, we work very closely with corporate marketing. Is a hodgepodge. But from a strategy perspective, we work on the, the narrative. Yes. I know you like storytelling. Yep. You know, it's so, so important, especially in a day like today, to capture an effective story. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk about some really high level uh, software conversations, the technology, the emerging tech that's going to drive the future of business, but they have to be said in a way that people can actually understand. Absolutely. And so one of my jobs is to really work with, across the teams to make sure we're telling the right story. And also strategically frame it in a way that is not just um, reactive to the marketplace, mm -hmm. but more proactive on a global scale. You've written books, you've spoken around the world, you've done all kinds of things but you're new here at SAP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so what, it, what attract, well first of all, tell us a little bit about your background, John, and then how did you end up and why did you choose to join SAP Ariba? Well, thank you for the question. Um, so my background is, is rather unique. I mean, I've had a, a very um, deep strategy background, working with a lot of Fortune 500 companies on narrative. I have ran my own business, mm -hmm. uh, Blue Phoenix, for 14 years. You know, had the opportunity to travel the world, given my viewpoints on emerging technology, what comes next, and I think that that storytelling was always innate in what I was doing. So, having a deep background in the energy world at the New York Mercantile Exchange and formerly working at both Solomon Smith Barney and Dow Jones, really kept coming back to strategy. But having a little bit of flavor from all the different things of yeah. my own career, yeah. just I thought made it stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, I love to write, and it was na a natural thing for me. You mentioned the book, but yeah. you know, for me, I just think it always, always goes back to communicating effectively. So with all this experience, why don't you share with us what, how you've seen marketing evolve yeah. over the last, let's just say, 10 years? You know, it's interesting because I think years past, we used to talk to consumers. Mm -hmm. Now we talk in more with consumers. So John, you've been involved in marketing all kinds of products and services over your career. What is unique about the world's largest B2B network? How do you, what kind of marketing strategies would you be using for, for that uh, network? Because that seems like a very unique product. Yeah, it is, and I go back to saying, I mean, look, we're big for a reason. Yeah. We, we obviously have a lot of things going in the right direction, but it's maintaining that leadership position, I think, believe where strategic marketing and communications mm. can play an effective role. To me, I think uh, what we're doing right now is is seeing ha turning a supply chain into a value chain. Mm. And so I think there's a lot of new opportunities to not just look at the traditional uh, customers, but to open it up because you know suppliers, because of the uh, advancement in the digital world, we have new opportunities to engage in countries and, and customers that we previously didn't have access to. So when I say everybody, because it's, it truly is a digitized planet that we're trying to be a part of, 
and we want to be a huge cog in this supply wheel. Mm -hmm. We have a huge network for a reason. The fact that we were able to grow, you know, business from nearly two trillion dollars uh, on our network in 2018 to, you know, nearly three three trillion in in a year's time wow. is the magnitude of what we're talking about. Literally, every transaction in the world has an effect on society. So, from a sustainable perspective, from a purpose, if you think about it, that doesn't. It, it's the multi-billion dollar companies. It's the average Joe is that everybody can play a role with decision making. Imagine if we can, if every person had in their mind that they were going to have an effective transaction. And what I mean effective is they actually knew that they were going to have the, the right supplier in the world, that there was no, could be no issues with where that product was sourced from. Mm. You know, we're thinking about the generations to come. I want my kids to know and be proud of the company that I'm working for. And I think that ultimately has to translate in what that network effect really yeah. is, is to show them, paint that picture of, look at the good that we're doing because of our network. Mm -hmm. So in essence, it's part of your brand reputation. So you know, out with the, you know, maybe we should consider it, and in with the, we have to do it because it's the, it is the right thing to do. And uh, hopefully a lot more business leaders take that approach. Well, John, I want to thank you so much for sharing with all of us today. Thanks for From your experience, your background, your, um, your insights. So thank you so much. This is fun. Thanks a lot. And I want to thank everyone out there for joining us today.